So all of the reactions that you've seen so far use the enol or enolate in equilibrium, and it doesn't hinder the reaction at all. In the uh, haloform reaction uh, or in the alpha halogenation, as the enol or enolate is used up, another one is formed so that it can continue the reaction, and that's not an issue. But what if you needed to do a reaction where you did 100% conversion from keto form to enol or enolate? This is gonna make the identity of your base really important. For example, if my base was ethoxide and I wanted to deprotonate acetone, the pKa of this hydrogen is about 19 to 20. And I can definitely you know, pull that off and uh, create my enolate. But the pKa of this proton is closer to 16. So now we have to wonder which side of this reaction is actually favored. Is it gonna be the side where I have the more acidic compound? Hopefully your head is screaming no. Um, also, I hope this arrow is a good indicator here. We are actually going to end up favoring the keto form in this situation. So since the pKa of this hydrogen is uh, a bit higher than that of the alcohol, we're gonna have more keto than enol form. So for every one enolate that's formed, we probably have um, 1,000 to 10,000 of these ketones. And that's just because of the difference in pKa. Now, um, if we were doing a reaction like the halo form reaction, it wouldn't be a big deal because every time we used up this enolate, we would replace it with another one. We would create another one. But some reactions need to have 100% enolate before it can move forward. And that's where we want, want to start using some more creative bases. So this reason is why we're going to bring back alkyl lithiates. You might recall them from earlier in Organic 2, um, using them in the same way that you would use Grignard reagents. We use them to attack carbonyl carbons and add on uh, carbons to a, a ketone or an aldehyde. Um, but we also saw them serving as really strong bases. So um, especially if you use the right one, you can get them to work only as a base. This base is lithium diisopropyl amide, or as we will call it from here on out, LDA. And because of its bulk, it's not going to be a good nucleophile. It's only going to work as a base. So this is going to be really, really great for enolate formation. So we have our deprotonated amide, which is going to be a really strong base. It can pull off this hydrogen and we can create our enolate, which again has a resonance form where the double bond is on the carbon. So why is this better? Why is this better than using ethoxide? Uh, for several different reasons. For one, the pKa of this hydrogen, if you recall, um, the pKa of amines is about 35. This particular one is about 38. So we're talking about a difference of 19 to 20 to 38. This side of the reaction is very, very heavily favored. And then also the general size of LDA, the fact that it's so bulky, allows it to serve as a base and only a base and not as a nucleophile. You're not gonna have any sort of interference in the reaction as a nucleophile, whereas you might see that with a smaller alkyl lithiate. Um, LDA is not particularly stable on its own because it's such a strong base. So it typically um, is synthesized either in situ uh, or you synthesize it and then immediately use it. So um, LDA can be made by reacting uh, diisopropyl amine with uh, n-butyl lithium. You're going to end up deprotonating your amine and you end up with LDA and butane. 
So again, this reaction is favored because the pKa of this one is 50. The pKa of this hydrogen is 38. This is going to push entirely that direction. So far, all of the enols and enolates we've looked at uh, have been formed from either symmetric uh, ketones or from aldehydes where there was only one type of alpha hydrogen. So we never had to worry about which hydrogen we should remove. But if you have an asymmetric compound and you have two different positions of alpha hydrogens, you have to make some decisions. And it ultimately comes down to what conditions you're in. Uh, so you can either form the thermodynamic enolate or the kinetic enolate. And hopefully you recall that thermodynamic means the one that is more stable, um, the one that's going to have a lower delta G, um, while kinetic means which one is formed the fastest. So um, in this case, the strongest base which is going to be LDA when you're comparing it to hydroxide or an alkoxide, uh, the strongest base is going to more quickly form the enolate. And that's typically going to be removal of the hydrogen that is least sterically hindered. So we have a bulky, strong base, and we have a choice between these two that are secondary or this one, which is tertiary and a little more sterically hindered. LDA is going to more easily pull off an alpha hydrogen from the secondary carbon. So you're going to see uh, predominantly this enolate. But if we do a reaction with um, a hydroxide or an alkoxide, where these hydrogens have pKa's much closer to those of our alpha hydrogens, we're going to end up in an equilibrium scenario where we can have interconversion uh, among the possible enolates so that eventually the more stable enolate is going to pre uh, predominate. And in this case, uh, the more stable one is formed from deprotonation of the tertiary carbon uh, because we're going to end up with the more substituted uh, alkene. So if we were interested in doing a reaction at the alpha carbon, um, such as alkylation, creating 100% um, of the enolate is going to be really important because we want the enolate to be our nucleophile in this situation. What we don't want is to react with something like methoxide, which could be a base or its nucleophile on its own, right? This could also react with iodomethane and do an SN2 reaction. We don't want that. We don't want that interference. Um, so we are going to use a bulky base, typically in ether conditions. So you see a lot of THF being used, or this one is dimethoxyethane. So polar aprotic solvent and you're going to get 100% conversion to the enolate, and it's going to be our kinetic enolate. It's not gonna be the thermodynamic ones. It's gonna be the, the less uh, hindered hydrogen removed to give us the uh, less stable enolate, but we're gonna get it very quickly. And then the enolate is going to react with our alkyl halide to substitute the alpha carbon. Uh, this is going to work best with uh, primary alkyl halides, just like SN2 reactions tend to work best with primary alkyl halides, because this is ultimately just an SN2 reaction. Our nucleophile is just a little more complicated. You can do the same type of reaction with an ester, uh, because again, the pKa of this hydrogen is going to be somewhere around 25 and LDA is a strong base. It can totally pull off that hydrogen, create the enolate, and then we can add on an alkyl group. So one, two carbons, one, two carbons. Uh, this is another place where students tend to add or lose carbons. So make sure that you're doing your carbon accounting as you go. Uh, in this reaction up towards the top, 
we added on you know an entire benzene ring you don't tend to lose that but there is this extra carbon here so you want to make sure that you have that carbon plus your benzene ring